Easiest way to catch and tag turtles is to wait for them to come ashore and lay their eggs. A turtle on a sandy beach is an easy target. To catch them in their natural environment is a bit harder, and in most places in the world you start that conversation with a net. But in the CNMI with our warm, clear waters and experienced free divers, the process is a little different. He'll grab the turtle and bring it to the surface, and as soon as he does, he'll bring it to the back of the boat. Dr. Jennifer Keller wants blood, turtle blood that is, so she can test it in her laboratory. Well, we expect to find some heavy metals um, and also maybe some organic pollutants. Jesse Hopday has caught over a thousand turtles for research using a deep breath of air, keen eyesight, and local knowledge. We are looking for hawksbills, and Tammy Summers from DLNR says we will go south. So today we're heading out to Tinian to do that research. As we head out, we're briefly escorted by some friendly dolphins. All of us hope it is a lucky sign. Once off Tinian, we gear up and ease into the water. My job is to follow Jesse and keep another pair of eyes out for turtles. Jesse scouts the reef and dives into a series of nooks and crannies. He knows the spots and he also knows how to use the sunlight to disguise himself as he approaches a feeding or sleeping turtle. Jesse soon spots one on the reef and heads down for a grab. It's a small green one and he brings it to the surface. This one won't do. We're looking for hawksbills, so this little green gets an early release and we decide to try our luck elsewhere. We find pay dirt at 100 feet. It's too deep for Jesse to dive on a breath of air, and a diver on scuba can't go that deep and bring a turtle up to the surface without risking decompression sickness. So this will require a coordinated effort, half scuba and half free diving. Sydney Takahashi brings the turtle up on scuba and then makes the handoff to Jesse, who brings it up to the surface. We have our first hawk's bill of the day, and the scientists quickly go to work. The turtle goes onto a pallet, and the pallet is elevated. This helps the blood rush to the head, and Summers then takes her samples from the neck area. The head is covered with a towel. This prevents bites and calms the turtle down from what is a stressful situation. Next, a microchip is inserted into so the back the flipper. Kind of this turtle now has a unique number. Uh, a small skin sample is also taken and then a series of measurements of both length and girth. The turtle is also weighed, and the last procedure is to take a sample of the shell, or scoot. What do you learn from the shell that you don't learn from the blood? We can measure heavy metals in both. Um, the, the scoot material, the keratin, it's a protein that makes up the shell. It's just like our fingernails and our hair, and it accumulates heavy metals. It, it deposits heavy metals into that tissue. The blood shows recent exposure while the scoot can show exposure over time. The area must be cleaned before the scoot shavings can be collected and once it's sterile, they are then scraped into a collection bag. The samples will go into liquid nitrogen for a chilled ride back to Keller's stateside laboratory. The Hawksbill gets to return home and no doubt is right now telling his buddies, you won't believe what just happened to me. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News.